Hello, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Every Thursday from 1 to 1.30 p.m. I'm your host, Danilo Cuellar, and today we'll be discussing the minimum wage causes more unemployment and poverty. This will be, I guess, part two, since I already did a, a, a video by this name in June, but <clears throat> why not do another one? Because it's always good to recap. So this is from my blog post uh, by the same name. Minimum wage laws create more unemployment, poverty, joblessness, and foster gang violence. The mechanism by which this is achieved is easily understood when one takes into account the basic economic theory in an environment wherein there is complete economic freedom, aka true capitalistic free markets, <clears throat> An employee may engage in a voluntary contract with an employer at a, any specified wage. This agreement is entirely voluntary as no fraud or initiatory violence has been committed. Therefore, no injustice has been committed. <clears throat> if there's no injustice, there's no crime. Some may argue, we need to pay them a living wage. What does this vague term, living wage, even mean? Who determines what a living wage is? In reality, this term means absolutely nothing. It is hypothetical Keynesian nonsense. There is no such thing as a, quote, living wage. It is a term used by those who seek to use the violence of government to force unequal people to be equal force the industrious down to the level of the slothful and to reward the unskilled at the expense of the skilled. Besides the obvious insanity of this collectivist intent, this effect is never actually realized. What actually happens is far more sinister. Far from being an employment law, minimum wage laws are unemployment laws. By outlawing certain voluntary agreements from taking place, they guarantee the creation of a permanently poor underclass that must appeal to government to support them in their poverty. As history has shown, once a particular generation enters into this government-dependent class, they must exert elephantine efforts to lift themselves out of it. It becomes a rut that is taught and passed down to the successive generations creating an ever-enlarging welfare state that is all supported and funded by the hard-working productive class. <clears throat> Minimum wage laws are truly ingenious ploys to win votes from the unthinking masses that hear the rhetoric of the living wage must keep up with inflation without ever stopping to think why this situation exists at all. Contrary to the propaganda of fearless, our fearless leaders feed us, inflation is not a natural state of any economy. It represents a massive monetary manipulation, interest rate rigging and fiat currency creation. These are the culprits of higher commodity housing, higher commodity housing and food prices. They are not the result of greedy business owners or selfish landlords. Know your enemy. <clears throat> Apart from blaming the state, there are real things you can do to improve your earning capacity. Read more books, acquire more skills, apprentice under those skilled in the field you wish to learn. Start your own business. Stop depending on other people or government for your economic survival. No one is responsible for your failure but yourself. Genius is as common as dirt. Use it. And I end with a quote by Thomas Sowell, um, Austrian economist. It would be comforting to believe that the government can simply decree higher pay for low-wage workers without having to worry about unfortunate repercussions. But the preponderance of evidence indicates <clears throat> that labor is not exempt from the basic economic principle that artificially high prices causes surpluses. In the case of the surplus of human beings, 
That can be a tragedy when they are already from low income, unskilled or minority backgrounds and urgently need to get on the job ladder. If they are ever to move up the ladder by acquiring experience and skills. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so minimum wage. I like talking about the minimum wage um, with people <clears throat> because it's a topic that really hits home for most people. You know, um, you talk about overseas wars, you talk about drone strikes, you talk about central bank, fiat currency creation, right? These are good concepts to talk about and understand. However, <clears throat> most people don't understand how those concepts can relate to them directly. Anyway, um, they don't see real uh, applications for an understanding of those concepts, right? However, minimum wage laws directly, uh, um, directly affect all people, mostly those unskilled, um, you know, most of the time it's in, uh, you know, the, uh, the blacks, the Hispanics, you know, <clears throat> the, 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 the people who typically earn the, the lower income or who occupy the jobs um, that, uh, you know, most, most of the time highly skilled people do not work. Those people get affected. Those are the bottom rungs of the ladder. Those, al although that's not to say that they're insignificant. Right, they are very significant. They are very important because without them, <laughs> there, there would be no society. Right, there would be no transportation of food. There would be no um, <clears throat> transportation of raw materials. You know, of resources that are vitally needed. You know, there there would be no um, basic necessities that we all rely on uh, to be there. So, <clears throat> those are the people it affects. Right, because. Once a minimum wage law goes into effect, what it essentially does is, well, it does a few things. First of all, it outlaws certain voluntary contracts, right? Second of all, it increases the price for human labor, right? Human labor is a, is a good, right? It's a, well, I guess it's, it's a service that we sell our labor to a company and the company pays us for our labor, right? It reimburses us for that labor. <clears throat> so in order for us to be employed and in order for the company to not go out of business, the company must make a profit from our labor, right? This is, uh, this is understandable. It's natural law of business, right? Um, so if the company is not making a profit and even worse, if the company is um, losing money by employing you, then uh, <clears throat> that's not sustainable <laughs> and that will eventually lead to bankruptcy and uh, the company going out of business and and then it doesn't benefit anyone right all those jobs that that company is offering to people you know helping those people um, make a living for their families feed their kids put their kids through uh, any kind of education they want uh, you know gone right completely gone. So, so w when you increase the price of human labor, <clears throat> what that does, right, natural su supply and demand, you increase the price that decreases the demand, right? The higher the price and businesses now have to make the decision uh, whether or not to keep you and if you are in fact earning uh, that amount of money for the business, <clears throat> You know, at least like for example, let's say, let's say you're you're flipping burgers, right? And you have like a what was seven fifty now <clears throat> dollar wage, right? Um, and they want to uh, you know you, you hear about these fast food workers in the Midwest um, with their protests and McDonald's say we need to get paid fifteen dollars an hour. Those people, those CEOs, are not doing anything. We're doing all the work. <clears throat> we need fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars. <laughs> All right, so let's do the math real quick. So, so seven fifty an hour. Um, <clears throat> in order for them to be employed, the company must make some profit. So perhaps they're they're producing maybe ten dollars an hour of value to the company. Therefore, the company reaps about two hundred two dollars fifty cents of profit, right? So, um, <clears throat> if you raise the minimum wage to 
fifteen dollars, um, that would immediately throw those people out of bit out of work, right? Because if they're continuing to to contribute only ten dollars of value to the company, and now through the these uh, oppressive laws, the company is forced to pay them fifteen dollars an hour. Well. Uh, then the company would rather fire those people than go out of business, right? This is just uh, natural self-preservation, right, of, uh, of businesses. So why would they pay a worker more than their value, than the value they're contributing to the company, right? That would not make sense. That goes completely against um, business principles, basically. <clears throat> so, so these people who protest... I really have no conception of uh, economics, of law and supply and demand, you know, these basic things of the value of their labor, right? So, um, <laughs> you know, as, as Mary Rothbard said, it's, it's no sin to be um, ignorant of economics, but it is, however, quite contemptible to, be, to have a loud and vociferous opinion whilst remaining in that state of ignorance, right? So... <clears throat> So please, people, um, <laughs> before you get all passionate and emotional about your job and about how much you're making, okay, you need to get a basic education before you start um, <laughs> doing idiotic protests and getting yourself arrested. All right. So there are many ways that you can uh, make more money, um, <clears throat> and one of them, and the most uh, inefficient way, is to protest. <laughs> Because you're only demonstrating to society how much of a fool you are. All right. So basically, the more skills you can offer a company, the more they will pay you. Right. The more you'll get reimbursed. It's only natural. Right. <clears throat> you know, brain surgeons get paid more because they have more skills. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, um, accountants get paid more because they have more skills. Right. Uh, <laughs> name name in the profession that, uh, you know, receives higher, much higher salaries than a McDonald's worker, and you can most of the time uh, identify skills that are unique, that are not um, easily acquired by people, right, that take a long time to learn and master, right? So, <clears throat> so, so that's one of the things it does, um, you know, increases the price of labor, and also it outlaws Oh, by the way, by uh, increasing the price of labor, so, so the, the company would fire them, but most of the time they will replace them with less expensive um, uh, ways of doing the same job, which most of the time uh, now means employing a robot, right? So perhaps at seven fifty an hour, the robot is too expensive to use in their business, but at fifteen dollars an hour, the robot is much cheaper. Therefore, it's more economically uh, preferable to use the robot over the machine. And by the way, uh, <clears throat> for those of you who who really think that robots are destroying jobs in this country, and that therefore we should uh, halt the the advancement of progress and technology, um, <laughs> I would say to you. Um, stop driving your car, stop using the internet, <clears throat> um, <laughs> stop wearing shoes, <laughs> stop using any comfort that has made your life easier. Because that's all that technology has done, it made our life easier. And it continues to do that, right? So, so the principle is that there are the scarce, uh, the resources are scarce, and human desires infinite, right? And the same thing goes with jobs, right? Resources are scarce, and basically human jobs are infinite. So, the more <clears throat> innovation that we have, so it doesn't really destroy jobs; it just transforms the jobs. It changes the landscape, right? People stop having to, you know, carry things on their back. Or in mules, and they can use a train, right? People, people stop having to do monotonous factory jobs, and they can go on to do other more uh, meaningful pursuits, right? 
it increases the wealth in society, right? The more, uh, the more technology helps to alleviate our um, existence. <clears throat> um, you know, I can go into the whole uh, <laughs> global warming thing and how you know, people say, well, you know, we're using fossil fuels and it's improving our lives, but we're destroying the environment. Well, you know, to me, that's uh, <clears throat> just as ludicrous of an assertion as is original sin, which is basically our very existence is sinful, right? And the whole global warming argument is basically identical. Our very existence for using natural resources to make our lives more comfortable and uh, convenient is sinful, right? Um, and uh, I think that's a uh, that's a ploy that's used by people who want to who want to uh, impose their insecurities and guilt onto you, right? So basically, what I would say is. Don't let them do that, all right? You live your life. You try to be a nice person. You, you know, you don't commit the basic crimes. Um, theft, uh, rape, assault, murder. And I would say you're a good person <laughs> on the whole. <laughs> That's a basic, uh, basic principle. So anyway, back to minimum wage. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> it outlaws certain voluntary contracts, right? So... One, one method, one, one way we can actually look at this is in sweatshops overseas. I, uh, I recently posted something on sweatshops. And uh, so basically, because it's, it's basically the same thing, you know, sweatshops, uh, you know, most people would consider them to be evil, immoral institutions where they employ the local populations and pay them slave wages, right, and, ex and exploit them thoroughly. Um, and basically we, we would have a similar argument for those earning under minimum wage now, in this country, uh, most people, most advocates for a minimum wage would say uh, employing somebody for $5 an hour is immoral. Whereas what I would say is um, <clears throat> it's not immoral uh, because there's no, there's no victim, right? No victim, no crime. That's the, uh, that's the whole uh, principle, right? Basic principle. And if two people come together, one person w wants to do a job for $5 an hour. The other person agrees to pay that person $5 an hour for that job. Where's the crime? And who's the victim? <clears throat> and the truth is there is no victim. Um, it's two adults consenting to a contract, right? And as long as those contract uh, stipulations are adhered to, um, there is no fraud. There is no wrongdoing. All right, and for... A bureaucrat to come in and forcibly prevent such a voluntary agreement is immoral entirely. <clears throat> so, um, yeah. So we we have to really understand uh, this from the from the perspective of uh, of morality. You know, two people. Some you know, a homeless guy is making zero dollars an hour, right? And from his perspective, five dollars an hour is an upgrade. So he would like to be making five dollars an hour, right? Maybe he doesn't have the skills to work in a McDonald's making seven fifty an hour, you know. So, so you can see how this keeps people permanently unemployed and in a, a state of poverty. And then the politicians come around and then point to this rising unemployment <clears throat> and and uh, you know group of people in poverty conditions. And says how you know we have, there's a war on the poor, and we need to we need to help the poor. We need to give them more handouts. We need to increase welfare. We need to increase you know the uh, food stamps, EBT cards, Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, so so um, in order to um, justify you know it, their own existence, the existence of government. So it it provides a very uh, clever tactic for the politicians to. Uh, basically advocate for the expansion of government power, right? And so talking about sweatshops, um, sweatshops also uh, overseas, sweatshops have a similar uh, concept as the minimum wage because, you know, again, they, you know, the slave wages, so, so most people consider them to be immoral, they're exploiting the workers. But if you were to look into the, uh, look into the, um, 
the whole scenario a little bit closer, you would discover that <clears throat> they do not actually exploit the workers because they're not forced to work there, right? Workers always have a choice. And, uh, you know, if they were forced to work there, that would be slavery, that would be immoral, right? But as long as there's the contract, and as long as those workers willingly sign the contract and work in those factories, then there is no wrongdoing. They are willing to work in those conditions and get paid. And what's the reason that they're willing to get paid is because that is perhaps the best of all possibilities for them, right? So the alternate possibilities for earning income in their country um, <clears throat> amounts to less than what they would be earning working in this quote-unquote sweatshop for quote-unquote slave wage, right? This whole idea of slave wage and, you know, worker exploitation um, goes back to Karl Marx and his Communist Manifesto. Um, but... But the idea is kind of uh, inane because <clears throat> the workers rely on the employer for the job, right? Um, for their income. The employer relies on the employee for their labor, right? It's a mutually beneficial agreement, right? All around. There is no exploitation. And if there was, I would imagine that those workers would immediately leave and go to another company uh, that would give them a better um, um, compensation. So, so in that way, you know, this is this is competition at work, right? This is beautiful because this always makes the uh, the employer, <clears throat> you know, pay the highest possible wage uh, for the work. Well, well, actually, so 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 the the incentive for employer basically is to pay the lowest, right? They want to pay the lowest possible wage and try to get the the most work out of the employee, right? Without complaint, <laughs> without, the, without, the, without the employee leaving, right? However, they can't pay too low because if they pay too low, then other, other companies would um, outbid them and pay more than, you know, let's say company, you know, company A pushes their, their wages down to, I don't know, $2 an hour, and then company B says, you know, oh no, I'm going to pay my $5 an hour for the same work, so where do you think the employees are going to go? They're going to flee to company B, right? So, so this, you know, if, if company A doesn't change their ways, they're going to rapidly go out of business as well. So they must um, compete with company B <clears throat> and bring their wages back up if they want to stay in business. This is just, um, this is how competition works, and this is how uh, you know, this is how you can prove basically that employers cannot just pay arbitrarily any any amount they want. They are determined by the marketplace. They are determined by the value of that labor in the marketplace. So sweatshops, basically, uh, the mechanism that occurs is people, um, you know, businesses who start in one country, let's say United States. Um, and then over time, as the government grows, um, you know, the tax code grows, regulations become more numerous, laws become more numerous, um, <clears throat> and it becomes more and more difficult and costly to stay in business in that country. So therefore, you know, remember, self-preservation companies always strive to stay in business, right? <clears throat> they must make a profit. And so if they can no longer make a profit, they have to make a choice, right? They either go out of business or they leave the country and go to so-called tax havens or countries which are um, much more freer and uh, are absent all of these strangulating regulations and uh, thieving taxations uh, that are present in the home country. So, so they flee to such tax haven countries um, and they, they establish shop, they open up their plants there, and they pay the workers um, much less than they would have to pay here, <clears throat> right? Um, and, I get, you know, you can imagine a lot of people, uh, <coughs> a, lot, a lot of people complaining, you know, you see, look at, uh, I don't know, General Motors, or look, or look at Apple, you know, they're, they're abandoning the United States, they're going to Mexico, they're going to, you know, I don't know, Cambodia, 
or China or whatever and paying these slave wages they are abandoning their home country this is why unemployment is so high in this country this is why people are out of work you know, these, these, these greedy businesses are going to make the most profit. Of course they're going to make the most profit. That's the idea of being in business, right? Why would they stay here to lose money, right? It doesn't make sense. So, you know, you can try to be patriotic and say as an, employ uh, as, as an entrepreneur and stay here because you, uh, yeah, you want to support American workers. But there comes a point that when, if you can't make a profit anymore, then you, again, <laughs> you can no longer support American workers if you're operating at a loss. Because eventually you're going to go out of business and then... Once you're out of business, those jobs are going to vanish anyway, and you're not going to be benefiting American workers that way either. So, um, so entrepreneurs must always make this choice, right? So, so sweatshops, what they basically do is they go to an area, uh, you know, a very impoverished country, and they they give them the opportunity to earn more income at the same time as teaching them basic skills. So, then those people that have learned those basic skills could take those, you know, let's say, and use them <clears throat> to, you know, acquire more skills. And so, and so, and then, um, and so this essentially raises the value of human capital in that particular country, right? And so then, you know, maybe one sweatshop goes there, let's, let's say just say co uh, company, <laughs> sweatshop is such a pejorative, pejorative term. Um, one, you know, company goes there and uh, provides jobs for these people. And then other, other businesses say, oh, look, that's a great idea. So they go there too. Then they start competing. The, uh, the value of human labor goes up in that particular region um, <clears throat> until perhaps it becomes too costly for the original uh, company A to stay there because <laughs> the, the purpose is defeated. The reason they went there is to, is to pay them lower wages, right? But now since the human labor and value of human uh, capital in the country has increased, it's no longer... Um, profitable as much and so therefore they move and so what they have done is by being there they have raised wealth in the country they have raised the value of human capital they have given these people skills right it's a net benefit everybody wins it's a win-win right and so then they go perhaps to another country and the whole process starts over again um, <clears throat> and this kind of goes back to the idea of uh, you know people say you know look at look at look at in this country child labor it was so gruesome, <clears throat> um, you know. Thank God for those for those labor unions. They have, uh, you know, changed businesses how businesses function in this country. Thank God for those laws. <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't necessarily uh, attribute that to unions or laws. You know, the fact that um, child labor was um, uh, abolished, although the fact that's kind of illegal does also um, <laughs> change the landscape a little bit. But I would more say that the, the improvements in technology and manufacturing and transportation, um, which have made our lives very uh, much, much easier, more convenient, has also decreased the need for uh, child, you know, young, young laborers, such as children, right? And by the way, if a child regardless of age, basically, if a child wants to work, you know, I guess, I guess you can say, you know, a child's not thinking for themselves, but again, the parent would be there and the parent would be um, making sure the child's not being taken advantage of, of course, right? But, you know, if all of that is, is fine, I don't really see why there's a problem with a child working, you know, as long as the parent's there and approves it and, you know, is, everything is... Uh, everything is uh, is all good I uh, I don't see a problem with it you know so um, but you know some people say well you know there's there's child the child sex trade and child prostitution <laughs> okay well that's that's a whole different story that's not that's not a business whatsoever that's forced prostitution that's slavery okay that's a little bit different from children who want to work and earn a little bit of money right you know how kids used to uh, used to work as uh, you know a paper boy when they were younger. You know, it's uh, you know it's, it's not really possible anymore because of child labor laws. So, so things have definitely changed, and uh, we must we must not um, ascribe that to our all-knowing, omnipotent, omniscient politicians. All right, we must rather ascribe that to the 
creativity and innovation that has been brought to us um, and through technological advancements and progress. Okay, this is the real uh, wealth generator. And uh, this, is where we should, um, this is where we should be praising. All right, so we have to, we have to really get our understanding on this, um, this topic of minimum wage. You know, we have to realize that um, wealth is not passed down from the top. It's not given to us by our masters. Wealth is created from the bottom, from the people actually doing the work and creating and innovating. All right? The inventors, the entrepreneurs, the employers, those are the people that are creating true wealth, not your politicians. All right? So, so please understand that they cannot help <laughs> people who have no, you know, um, who have no skills why would why should they be paid more? And re really quick, another another point we can discuss is uh, the ridiculousness of the minimum wage and the arbitrary nature. Like, you know, if if the minimum wage truly worked, then why would you stop at fifteen dollars an hour? Right? Why don't you go keep going? Go to fifty dollars, hundred dollars an hour. Go to five hundred, one thousand dollars an hour. Make the minimum wage one thousand dollars an hour. That should fix it. Then we'll all be we'll all be rich. <laughs> right? Why stop at 15? <laughs> stop playing with us. <laughs> so, people understand where true wealth comes from. It doesn't come from uh, welfare parasites known as politicians. It comes from you and me and your family and your friends. All right? It comes from gaining new skills, inventing new things, all right, that benefit us all, right, because we are the free market. So I'm going to stop right there. Um, this is um, Peace Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.